Lighting is so important to photography, and besides learning to shoot in manual mode, nothing is really going to have a greater impact on the quality of your photos um, than learning to understand and see light. So we're just going to give you guys four basic lighting principles um, using natural light, which basically just means sunlight or available light. So those are shooting in the shade, backlighting, direct sun, and using a window light. Shooting in the shade is an awesome technique to use, especially if you're shooting people. Um, it a, creates a very evenly displaced light, which is very flattering uh, on, on people's faces. Um, you get the same effect also if it's an overcast day and there's lots of clouds in the sky, because basically what's happening is that sun is shining through those clouds and dispersing that light evenly. So it's like this really soft and beautiful light. So it's great if you're going to be shooting people. All right, so the next technique we're going to talk about is backlighting. Um, backlighting, it's a really simple principle. It's basically when you're shooting your subject, you're going to put the sun behind them. Uh, so what happens now is you're going to be exposing for their face. So this is a great opportunity to use spot metering, which we had talked about in the metering videos. Um, it's really cool also because a lot of times you'll get a nice rim of light, uh, and it kind of makes them jump off the page a little bit. Other things to keep in mind, um, since the sun will be in front of you, you want to be aware of lens flare, which basically takes place when the light from the sun actually goes into your lens. Um, one way to help manage that is to have a lens hood like this. Um, so basically this extends off the front of the lens, and the idea is that the sun will kind of be stopped by this part that's sticking out. Um, another great way to avoid lens flare is to put your subject where you want them, and so they're being backlit, but you are actually shooting from the shade, so there's no way that sun could be entering into your lens. Backlighting is one of my favorite techniques. It's especially great if you're going to be photographing people uh, because it creates this nice rim of light behind their head, and it kind of helps them jump off the page. Um, there's a few things to think about and remember when you're going to be using backlighting. Uh, the first thing is you want to make sure that you are spot metering for the subject's face so you can obtain a properly exposed image. And also, um, you want to make sure that you are shooting from the shade if possible to avoid lens flare. So you don't want the sun coming into your lens uh, and, and kind of blowing out your photograph. Uh, if you can't shoot from the shade, you should uh, try to use one of these lens hoods, uh, which helps block out that sun from coming into your lens. All right, so uh, we're using the Nikon D700, and this is the 85 millimeter lens, uh, which is great for portraits. Uh, so we'll take some photos and just uh, show you guys the results. If you're stuck shooting indoors, a window light is a great technique for you to use. It creates this really soft and natural, just beautiful light. So if you're shooting people, um, it's a great, great option for you. So there are a few things to keep in mind. Um, as we talk about in the white balance video, if you're using a window light and you're shooting indoors, so you don't have white balance issues, make sure you turn off any tungsten lamps or fluorescent lights. Um, so basically you just want to make sure that your light source is only that window or other windows. All right, so we talked to you guys about window lighting in the studio, and now we want to bring you on location in a real life situation uh, so you can see the results from what we're doing. First thing to take note of is that we have eliminated all of the light sources except for the window light. So just having that one main light source, that one type of lighting, ensures that we won't have any white balance issues. Um, the second thing I want you guys to pay attention to is we're going to start Lacey really close to the window and then slowly move her away. And so we want you to notice how the intensity of the light changes and also how the light reacts to her face as we kind of angle her differently. Uh, so we'll start out with a really big side lighting and then we'll kind of turn her so the window is more in front of her. All right, so let's take some photos and see what happens. Nice. All right, so we started with the window directly on the right side of her face. Now we're going to turn her a little bit towards the window. Uh, so you're going to see a lot of those, some of the shadows that were on this side of her face and under her nose will be eliminated. So now we're going to move her even further away from the window. And what you'll notice is that the intensity of the light changes, so it gets softer.
Direct sunlight is what it sounds like, direct sunlight. So basically what you're doing is taking your subject here and using the sun to light them. So you'd be shooting this way. I don't use this technique a whole lot, but it does come in handy, especially if you are trying to, for instance, uh, photograph a group of people that are standing in front of a building and you want to get the building in the background. If the sun is lighting the building and it's lighting them, then they'll both be the same brightness. Shooting indoors is one of the more challenging obstacles for new photographers. Um, there's all kinds of white balance issues and there's just usually less light and the light that is actually there is just not good light. So as you're learning to shoot in manual mode and become confident with your skills, um, I encourage you to actually practice more with outdoors. If you do find yourself stuck indoors uh, trying to shoot some people, photograph a group of people, whatever, and you can't convince them to go outside, um, here's some tips that can help you out and hopefully get you through it. So um, as we talk about in the white balance section, choose one light source um, so you don't have crazy white balance issues going on. Um, so usually you'll have to choose the one light source and put them as close to that light source as possible. Um, I personally recommend that you find a good window to use um, so you can do that and shut off the other lights. Another thing to keep in mind is that compared to the sun, shooting indoors, there is significantly less light to work with. Um, so you're really going to probably have to slow down your shutter speed and open up your aperture to like an f, f4, f2 um, and probably crank up your ISO higher to like ISO 800, ISO 1000.